Jada and Stitches Show, and welcome to Fair Isle Friday. It's summer, it's July, let this be your official welcome to the good weather here in Canada, and very appropriately, we are going to add a sunshine motif to our blanket this month. Ah, the warm sunny rays of the sunshine. I wait all year for it, so it was rather appropriate that we were able to add it to the blanket this month. Now, this particular motif is a little bit different than some of the other ones. I know it doesn't look it, but it is. The, uh, there are two rows that are mirror image of each other that sit apart. That sounds funny. But it basically means that if you are right-handed or left-handed, you have to pay extra attention on those two rows. Now, obviously, I'm going to point them out. I'm going to walk you through it, whether you are right-handed or left-handed. And the written pattern includes written directions for both handedness. So just a little something to keep in mind as we work through today's graphic. Now, as it is July, that means there's a few other special things that have recently happened. In particular, there were some graduations. We know some people graduated and asked for a graduation graph. So I have a little cap and the year and a little cap uh, graduation. These are also available in our Etsy shop. They're actually both in the same pattern. You can use just the cap or the cap with the year. Uh, combined or separately if you wanted. So that pattern is available in our shop. Also, we know the Americans just had their 4th of July celebration. We were asked to make a 4th of July uh, or American flag graph. We did this one. I love it. Uh, that is such a pretty flag. <laughs> um, and that one is now available in our Etsy shop as well. And coming soon, for all of our Canadian friends, we've also got this. So I had to add a maple leaf um, I also just love the challenge of trying to do a maple leaf anything. I had, <laughs> find them difficult to draw, I find them difficult to crochet. So there we go, there's a maple leaf uh, graph and pattern also available in our Etsy shop. That's it for plugs, let's grab our blankets, we'll grab our yarn and our hooks, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up some sunshine emojis, how appropriate, just in time for the warm weather ahead. <laughs> For the July graph, we're using the same yarn we've been using all along. For me, that's a size 4 medium weight acrylic yarn. You're going to need about 110 yards of color A, for me that's white, and approximately 60 yards, 10 yards per spool of your color B. And I'm using a nice bronze color today for my sunshine. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the same hook you've been using all along. For me, that's a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9. And once you've got that, plus your blanket, we're good to go. As always, I recommend doing a sampler or two, or possibly three, of the graph. This gives you an idea of when the changes come along with the color, it gives you an idea of maybe what colors look good together if you're still experimenting, and it gets you comfortable with the pattern in general. I've made a couple. I have a darker orange on a darker blue, where I was sort of fiddling a little bit with the placement of the solar flares, and I just have the regular one, which is a light orange on a pretty gray background. I really like them both, and they both feel very summery to me. As usual, we will have a small version of today's craft up here in the top right hand corner. You can pause the video at any time if you are moving faster or slower than me, and you can just pay attention to the craft as we go. I will be calling out the counts as usual, and I will also be talking about directions for right-handed and left-handed. This is not a perfectly mirror image graph. We do have one little change in row five and row seven. And so it will depend strongly whether you are right-handed or left-handed. So you wanna make sure you pay attention to rows five and row seven, especially when we get there. Otherwise, it's completely mirror image. And really, if you're going one way or the other, it doesn't quite matter. But like I said, row five and row seven are slightly special this week. I left off with my safety pin last month. That's how I sort of secure my little stitch so I know it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to put my hook back in. I'm going to chain two to begin the row. Every row begins with a chain two. The chain two counts as a double crochet. Let's take a look at the graph. The first row, as all the other graphs, is a solid row of color A. For me, that's white. 
20 stitches per graph represents one full repeat of the graph. I'm doing six full repeats. I'll be doing 120 stitches in total in my color A. It's just double crochet with color A all the way across. So let me get my blanket going here. Remember that chain two counts as a double crochet, so that means that first stitch is taken care of no matter what row you're on. That is a used stitch. So you start everything in the next stitch. Double crochet in each stitch all the way across with color A, and I will hook up with you for row two. At the end of row one, you'll have 120 stitches or as many repeats of the graph at 20 stitches that you're doing all the way across. So for me, that's 120. We're going to chain two and turn. We are beginning and ending every row of this graph with color A. So that chain two counts as the first double crochet in the row. Let's take a look at the graph. Right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. But this is a mirror image row, so it doesn't really matter which side you start on. We are starting with seven stitches in color A, one in color B, four in color A, one in color B, seven in color A. So seven, one, four, one, seven. Repeat all the way across. We are introducing our spools in this row. So the first row of color has a use of the spool twice, and then we drop it after the second stitch. So let's get that going. So I've already got one double crochet, which is that chain two that began the row. I need to make six more. And as I begin the seventh stitch, remember we are approaching the color change. So before I finish it, I want to pause. I'm going to grab my first spool. I'm going to make a slip knot and I'm going to work that color in directly. So loop on hook, not too tight. Finish that stitch with the new color. I'm going to work one stitch in B. So there's a color change immediately. I don't finish that stitch. I drop the color, finish it with A, and now I'm carrying B underneath A for four stitches. And remember, when you carry a color for a little while, it might want to sort of stick out underneath those stitches for you. So just pull, not too tightly, but just tight enough that it will disappear under those stitches. You can always go back and sort of smooth out some of the stitch work that you've done. Looks like I accidentally pulled out my fourth stitch. So I start that fourth stitch. I'm going for the color change now. one stitch with B. There's a color change immediately, so I go back to A, and that is it for the use of the spool for the first row, so I'm going to drop my first spool. So I'm just going to roll it back up and pinch off the color so it doesn't bounce around too much on me. I finish that first graph repeat with seven more double crochet using color A. And there we go. That is the first graph repeat. 7A, 1B, 4A, you're carrying B, 1 in B, 7 in A, you drop that spool after the second stitch or the second use of it in that graph repeat, and now you repeat 7 with A, you tie in this next spool for B, 4A, 1B, drop the spool, 7A, repeat. You're going to have all six of your spools engaged at the end of row two. Remember that last stitch in the row does go in the top of the chain two. Don't miss it, otherwise your stitch count will be off. 
7 in A, 1 in B, 4 in A, 1 in B, 7 in A. And that is it for row 2. Now you have all of your spools engaged and try to remember to have them all start and finish on the same side. Doesn't matter what side they start on, but they need to finish the row on the same side. So for me, they all joined on the back. They finished on the back. Now we chain two, turn our work for row three. I'm gonna spin everything around and all my spools will now be on the front. All right, let's grab the graph. We're starting row three, right-handed, you're over here, left-handed, you're over here, but this is a mirror image row, so whatever right way you come at it, it doesn't really matter. We start with three in A, one B, three A, two B, two A, two B, three A, 1B, 3A, and then repeat. So let's go. That chain two at the beginning of the row counts as a double crochet. We have two more double crochet to work in A before we change colors. You start that last stitch before the color change. I'm gonna unhook my B. There is a reach. This is where the yarn was used last. We're using it over here. So remember when there's a reach to not pull too tightly and then you want to make sure you're working over top of that reach as you go. One double crochet using B. Remember you're carrying the other color until it's time to drop one. There's an immediate color change, so we go back to A. Now we're carrying B. We're going to work three double crochet using A. I'm working over top of both the B and the reach. Making sure I get everything there. Uh, there's a color change, so I'm going to drop the A briefly. Finish that stitch with B. Now it's 2B. Again, making sure that I change colors just in time for the color change. 2A, always carrying the color that's not being used. Change back to B. 2B. Switching back to A, finish that stitch. 3A, I'm carrying B. Changing colors, back to B. 1B, changing colors, back to A. And now I am dropping B completely. That's it for B, for this part of the graph. I'm dropping B, I'm making sure it's on the same side that it started on, which is the front for this row. And then I finish with three double crochet in A. And I've got to make sure that I don't have yarn tangling around any of my other spools as I go. <laughs> and that is the repeat for row three. 3A, 1B, 3A, 2B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 1B, drop that yarn, 3A, and continue. That is row three complete. All of your spools should start and finish on whatever, or should say they should finish on the side they started on. For me, this time it was the front. We are going to finish the row, chain two, and turn. And now all of your spools move to the other side of the blanket. For me, that is the back or the side facing away from me. And let's take a look at the graph. We are on row four. Right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. But this is a mirror image row, so technically it doesn't matter what side you come at it from. 3A, 2B, 1A, 8B, 1A, 2B, 3A, repeat. That chain two counts as the first double crochet. I've got two more to go. I start the third, and before I finish it, I change colors, so I'm going to unhook my B. Now there's just a smidgen of a, of a reach, not really, because you're basically coming up to just above where you dropped your yarn, but there's always a little bit of a something. So if you 
always remember you want to look on the front, look on the back. You're looking for opportunities to just kind of neaten your work as you go. I'm going to want to catch this as I double crochet. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to double crochet. I'm working over top of the white, but I also want to catch this little reach. I'm just going to slip my hook inside it and double crochet as normal. And before I finish that, I'm just going to show you, see I've grabbed it and I've pulled it up into the stitch. So instead of it maybe wanting to come over top of this stitch here, I've just worked over top of it. I've pulled it into the same color stitch. Now that uh, we've got to finish that stitch now and work one more. So two and B, but before we finish, we switch to A. Remember you're working over top of any color you're not using inside of the graph. So working over top of B, we work one double crochet in A. Before we finish, we switch back to B. And now we work eight double crochet in B. You're carrying your A. We're going to start that eighth double crochet. We're going to switch colors. Always look when you've carried a color for a long time, you're going to want to pull on it, but not too tightly. Maybe hold on to the last stitch in that color and that will help hide it underneath those stitches. You can always go back and just sort of smooth out those stitches later. Finish the stitch with A. Work one double crochet in A. Finish that stitch with B. Work two double crochet in B. Remember you're carrying A. And that is it for B for the graph. So you finish with A, you drop B completely, and it's three more double crochet to finish the graph for row four before you continue. So I like to finish the graph at least one full set of 20 stitches and then I go grab that spool, I wind it back up, clip it in place and then I feel comfortable carrying on to the next one. 3A, 2B, 1A, 8B, 1A, 2B, 3A, repeat. That is row four complete. Don't forget your last stitch is in the top of the chain two. Let's chain two to begin the next row. We'll turn our work. All of our spools are moving now to the other side of our blanket. And here we go. Row five is the first row of this particular graph that changes depending on whether or not you're right or left-handed. Right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. You're gonna notice the biggest change is that for the right-handed, the next stitch after our chain two is a B. For the right or the left-handed, you're working five in A to begin. So here we go. For right-handed, your row five goes 1A, 1B, 3A, 10B, 5A, repeat. If you are left-handed, your row five goes 5A, 10B, 3A, 1B, 1A, repeat. So remember, the side of the graph that the number is on is where the right-handed people start. If you're left-handed, you're on the other side. So row five and row seven are not mirror image rows. This is why it's very important that you are starting on the correct side that you should be starting on. So there we go. Let's start. That chain two counts as a double crochet, which means for the right-handed, we are immediately into a color change. For the left-handed, you've got five or four more double crochets to work in A. Remember, you're not finishing that stitch, you're changing colors again. We have a reach. Lefties, you will have a reach in the opposite direction on the other side of the graph. So we'll finish that. Three more double crochet in A. And I'm working over top of that little reach as I go. All right, time for a color change. I'm just gonna tighten up on that yarn. I'm now car carrying a 
So we're all five stitches in to the graph now, whether you're working from the right or the left. And now we have 10 in B in the middle. So that's the same. The 10 middle stitches are the same in B, whether you are working left or right-handed. Start my tenth stitch. There's a color change coming for everybody. I'm going to tighten up on that middle. I'm going to finish that stitch with A. For the right handed, you are dropping your B. That's it for B. You have five more stitches in A, and then you're going to repeat. If you're left handed, you're going to carry your B just for three more stitches, and then you're going to work one B. So 3A, if you were left-handed, you're actually going in the other direction. This is the part that you're coming to now if you're left-handed. So 3A, 1B, 1A, and then repeat. So I'm just going to show you the graph one more time. And of course, you can uh, take a look at it up top too if you need to. But just remember that it's a bit different now whether you're working right or left-handed. So right-handed, it's 1A, 1B, 3A. 10b, 5a. Left-handed, it's 5a, 10b, 3a, 1b, 1a. Repeat. So keep that in mind as you work the rest of row 5. At the end of row 5, we chain 2 and turn. Spool move to the other side. We've got the bottom half of our sunshine now and here we go we're halfway through this is row six row six is a mirror image so whatever way you come at it it will be the same but just for consistency sake right handed you're over here now left handed you're over here 1a 2b 1a 12b 1a 2b 1a repeat that is row six let's get it going that chain two counts as a double crochet. We immediately switch to our B, B for two. Remember that you've got a bit of a reach now, so you wanna make sure you're working over top of that, plus you're carrying your A. We're switching back to A, carrying B, for one double crochet with A before we switch back to B again. And now it's 12 in B. So this is the very middle of the sun. It's the widest part of the sun. So that's the 12th stitch started. I'm going to just pull on my A so that I don't have it showing through on either side. Looks good. So switching to A for one double crochet before I switch back to B for two double crochet. Switch back to A For one double crochet, I am dropping B, so we're done with B. One double crochet with A before we repeat the entire thing. So let's take a look. We've got 1A, 2B, 1A, 12B, 1A, 2B, 1A. Repeat. It's row six. It's the middle of the sunshine. We are halfway through. This is the widest part of the sunshine. And whatever direction you come at this row, whether you're coming at it from the left or the right, it is a mirror image, so it will be the same thing. And uh, that's all you need to do across. Remember to tie up your loose spools 
so they don't dance around with the other ones. <laughs> That is row six, the middle row done. We've got half of our suns complete. We finish that row with one A in the top of the chain two. Chain two, turn your work. All of our spools move. Let's take a look at the graph. Row seven is an exact mirror image of row five. So right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. Right-handed, we start with 5A, move to 10B, 3A, 1B, 1A, repeat. Lefties, you now start with the chain two, which is 1A, right into 1B, 3A, and then 10B, 5A, repeat. So we are doing exactly what we did in row five, only the mirror image. So you're basically reversing whatever you did as a right-handed, you are now doing it the way the lefties did it. If you're left-handed, you're now doing it the way the righties did it in row five. So there we go. So for the right-handed, we start with the chain two, that is our double crochet. We have a few more double crochets to do. We are carrying our color. If you are left-handed, you are immediately working 1B. Begin that fifth stitch, no matter which way you're going, and we all do 10 double crochet in the middle with color B. Make sure you're carrying A. On that tenth stitch, you begin it. Pause, pull on that color A just to make sure that it's not gapping out anywhere. Switch colors. Those of us who are right-handed are going to do 3A, and those of you who are left-handed are going to do 5A. Right-handed, we're switching once more for one last stitch in B. Switching back to A and finishing it, we're dropping B, one more in A. So right-handed, 5A, 10B, 3A, 1B, 1A. Left-handed, 1A, 1B, 3A, 10B, 5A, repeat. That is row seven. We're on the other half of the graph now. This is the last row that is different for right-handed versus left-handed. So just make sure you focus <laughs> for this row. And then every other row after this will be a repeat of a previous row. That was row seven. Remember right-handed, you had this one extra stitch over here. Uh, where the lefties had it in row five, and lefties, your extra stitch is over here where the right-handed people had it in row five. So row seven was a complete opposite of row five. Chain two, turn your work, we're into row eight. Row eight is now a complete repeat of row four, exactly. So just to reiterate, let's grab the graph. Row eight, right-handed, you're over here left-handed, you're over here, but from here on out, every row is an even um, mirror image of each other, so it doesn't really matter where you, uh, which side you start on, so if you get a little lost from here on out, that's okay. 3A, 
2b, 1a, 8b, 1a, 2b, 3a, repeat. Like I said, it's an exact repeat of row 4, and both of us are doing the same thing whether you're left-handed or right-handed. That was row 8. We have two more rows left with the, the two color changing and then one more row of solid double crochet all in A after that. So let's finish. We're going to chain 2, turn, spools are moving to the other side. We are approaching row 9. Row 9 is a perfect copy of what row 3 was. So let's grab the graph and take a look. Row 9! Right-handed, draw over here. Left-handed, draw over here. It's a mirror image row, though, so it doesn't matter really what side you come at it. 3a, 1b, 3a, 2b, 2a, 2b, 3a, 1b, 3a. Repeat. Row 9 is exactly the same as row 3. Repeat it six times, and I'll see you at the end. was row 9. We're going to chain 2, turn. In row 10 we are finishing with our color B and our spools. And row 10 is an exact repeat of row 2. Let's take a look at the graph. Here we are up here, right-handed, left-handed, although this is a mirror image row, so no matter which direction you come at it, it will be the same. We have 7A, 1B, 4a, 1b, 7a, repeat. So you're only using b twice, just like we did exactly in row 2. That is it for the b. Once you drop your b, you can get your spool out of the way, put it away, and then you will be finished with b and your spools by the time you get to the end of row 10. That is row 10 complete. Our sunshines are finished. Remember that last stitch is worked into the top of the chain two. You can get rid of your uh, spools now. You can trim your long strings if you have them. You can also start weaving in your tails if you want to on the side that they finished on. We've got one more row to do. It's row 11, so we're going to chain two, turn, and this is the easy row, just like row one. It is all double crochet, and it is all done using color A. So double crochet in every single stitch all the way across with color A. And that will be it for the July edition of the blanket. Wow! At the end of row 11, you are all done. If you are continuing with your same A color for next month, then you can do what I do and just pop in a little stitch marker or a safety pin and that will help keep your spot from disappearing so you can use your hook for other things if you need to and then don't remember or I should say don't forget <laughs> to weave in all of your tails you might have some out the bottom as well as some out the top 
So you want to take a moment to weave those all in so everything looks nice and neat and tidy for next month. And there you go. A lovely warm reminder of the summer. The summer of 23. <laughs> as I say that it's not exactly summery looking out there right now it's it's overcast there's a threat of rain in the air forecast but uh, I'll take it it still means that it's nice and warm out we hope you enjoyed working on the sunshine graph along with us this month and just a reminder if you want to check out any of the Fair Isle plus style graphs and patterns that we have available in our Etsy shop we will have them all up front uh, so you can find them they're also in the graphs section of our shop if you pop over there and take a look around and all this month of July we are having a three or more sale in our Etsy shop so if you buy three or more patterns at the same time doesn't matter which ones you'll save 15 percent on your entire purchase so just a little plug and a big thank you to everybody who's made use of that sale so far it helps keep us going here at the Jada and Stitches show and it means more now than it ever has <laughs> so um we will see you guys soon thanks so much for hanging out and we'll see you Monday for the summer schedule and then the following Friday for something else. I'm not going to say what, but lots of good stuff in the forecast. The crochet forecast. <laughs> okay, everyone, have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye! Hi everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!